speak this morning. Um, yeah, so Creative Morning, today we're talking about humility. Uh, I figured I'd start with a, a little bit of my humble origins. Now I'm a filmmaker uh, helping to launch Weld, so that's a little bit of what I do, but uh, a background story of my first job was, uh, was a humble story. So. Uh, it was end of the end of my freshman year at college. Everybody's looking for a summer job, and so the girl I was dating at the time, uh, she was going to Uganda, but she says my grandparents live in uh, California, and uh, in Orange County. Which my only reference for California at the time was the show The O.C. You guys are familiar, and so I had a very uh, romantic idea of what that was. And she's like, they need a house sitter, so. And so you're gonna get paid to live in this mansion in Orange County, California as a 19 year old. And I'm like, okay, I'll do it. And uh, we didn't really talk about any of the details. I just went out there and, and made it happen. And um, the first thing I realized when I got out there was uh, Fullerton is a town in Orange County, technically. <laughs> but it's kind of right near Disneyland, about 45 minutes from the beach, and it's just, a bunch of old rich people and like strip malls and stuff. It's not super cool, so I'm already like not on, I'm not, I'm a little disappointed already. On top of that, um, the grandparents are still there when I get there, which is cool, but then like one week goes by, two weeks go by, the summer is slipping through my fingers and I'm in this house with my girlfriend's grandparents who I don't know, <laughs> watching televangelists and Fox News, so. <laughs> It was a bit of a letdown. Um, I, uh, I was also looking at my bank account, realizing I don't have any money, and I don't really know how to communicate that this deal is not what I thought it was. So they communicate it first, and they say, so when are you gonna start paying rent? Like, what's the deal here? And I'm like, oh. You know, at the time, I'm not super confrontational, so I just start looking for a job. And uh, so the only job I can manage to get is at Jamba Juice. And uh, in this suburban town in California. Uh, and then to just the final kind of blow was my boss uh, first week, and she's like, hey, you're the new guy, you get the new guy job. Here's a banana suit, a full body banana suit that I need you to wear. Like, put the tights on, put the banana suit, your face is gonna stick out here, and, uh, and serve samples to everybody. So, um, this was, at this point I realized like, I don't, I'm, I'm trying to chase my dreams, but I'm having this existential crisis on a, on a suburban sidewalk. <laughs> to book in the trip, I also was trying to be a cool like surfer bro, and I was convinced that I was gonna learn how. And uh, my good friend Patrick Dodd gave me a board that was about six feet tall. He's like, this is gonna be really tough to learn on, but you can give it a shot. And uh, so I'm like, I know how to skate, like I'll, I got this. And I uh, spent the whole summer trying to surf, very unsuccessful. And the last day out, I was finally going back in. I didn't catch a wave. I'm in like two feet of water. And um, hear this kind of riptide come up from behind me. The water in front of me recedes and it's just wet sand. And I'm in the air. My surfboard goes down into the water or goes in, into the wet sand, sticks there. And I fly head first and crack the surfboard in half. <laughs> And then I drove back to Texas. <laughs> so, that was a very humble summer for me. Um, and uh, uh, from there, it's, it's all been uphill, so I encourage you to, if you face a similar experience, keep trucking, it'll be fine. Um, so I started out, I'm kind of going, going to go through humility based on some quotes. Um, when I started that, uh, kind of Googling quotes, I discovered it was super fun to Google uh, image quotes, which is essentially 
these truisms or cliches and good stuff, but paired up with pretty horrendously bad um, design sense, I guess. So if you, if you don't mind, I'm just going to share a couple of like my process of no, 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 but I want to show you. So we've got the cat <laughs> picture. This one I don't quite understand. Pride and humility, we'll be talking about both because they're kind of counterparts that go hand in hand. Uh, Maybe a five letter word, but it can kill a very long word. Relationship. <laughs> I think that's true. <laughs> uh, the other funny thing was the people, like, who it was referencing, like, who quoted this was, like, all over the map. So we got, and this is one we will talk about. Humility is not thinking less of yourself, but thinking of yourself less. Uh, C.S. Lewis said that. And so did Rick Warren. <laughs> and so did Ken, right before he joined a terrifying cult, apparently. <laughs> and then the final one, just for giggles, this one's, this one's tough. If your pride is bigger than your heart and your ego is bigger than your head, grow up or you'll be alone for life. <laughs> Pictured as a dead leaf on a branch. Uh, and you can find that at Daily Inspirational Quotes in case you need a little pick-me-up. Uh, if you got the email or the sign-up uh, um, on the website as well, did you guys read this quote? Most of you guys? Cool. This is from a cool guy named John Acuff. That's how you pronounce it, right? He says, um, he's kind of tackling humility, uh, and we'll circle back to this at the end, but he's kind of tackling uh, the, the wrong version of humility and saying how that can kind of handicap you. So he says, uh, people are mistaken when they think chasing your dream is a selfish thing to do, as if perhaps being average is an act of humility, as if perhaps wasting the talents you were given is proof that you're a considerate individual. It's not. A little sassy at the end. Um, and I think that's true, and I, we're looking at this, this quote out of context, um, but I kind of want to, throughout the speech, define what, um, how we, how we uh, frame humility or pride, because those are very obtuse terms now. We think of both as, as vice and virtue. You say humility is good, but then you say I was humiliated and that was like a tragic thing, and, and then we talk about you need to have pride in yourself, but then there's also the, the other side of, you know, the Icarus flying too high and it comes before the fall. So those words need to be defined and I think also, um, I think this is a really great quote, but I also wonder what your dream is. That has to be defined because sometimes chasing your dream is very selfish. If your dream is to take over the world, there's going to be probably some collateral damage to other people along the way. I know we've seen that. So, um, but in that, in that context, uh, I think he's right, and this quote reminded me of another from uh, C.S. Lewis. And he says, our desires are not too strong, but too weak. We are half-hearted creatures fooling about with drink and sex and ambition when infinite joy is offered us. Like an ignorant child who wants to go on making mud pies, which fits with our humble pies, in a slum because we cannot imagine what is meant by the offer uh, of a holiday at the sea. We are far too easily pleased. Um, so I think, especially for a lot of us in this room, there's that constant battle of um, believing that we're capable of really great things, but also um, being ha handicapped by our own fears and insecurities. So that's what is kind of being tackled right here. Um, but let's jump into, um, back to that kind of defining the terms. And um, I think in that realm of how much humility do you have, or how proud are you, are you too proud? I don't think it's, I don't think it's necessarily that sliding scale of like, you've got to be this many degrees and there's a gray area. I think it's more of a categorical thing. And the categories that I um, put it into is kind of, are you viewing the world through an individual, as an individual, or as part of a, uh, a collective? Because um, I think that really frames how you see yourself and if you can be um, humble or not. So my examples are, uh, that's a picture of Ayn Rand. She's the author that did Fountainhead and Atlas Shrugged. I don't know if you guys have read that, but she gets kind of a bad rap, and that's probably because she's kind of a terrible person. Um, 
And then here we have on the right is the, the uh, collective kind of force. So um, Ayn Rand says her philosophy is called objectivism. <coughs> Excuse me. Let me take a little water break. Uh, for her, she says, I also got a phone call. Uh, objectivism. She says, my philosophy, in essence, is the concept of man as a heroic being. I'm okay with that. Uh, with his own happiness as the moral purpose of his life, with productive achievement as his noblest activity, and reason as his only absolute. Um, and so I think by contrast, uh, kind of one of the cliche quotes I found online is, for if a more collectively minded person might say, pride is concerned with who is right and humility is concerned with what is right. Um, so that mentality kind of transcends the individual's reason to say like, I am my own force, I need to, I can trust myself. Uh, instead of that, it's saying like, hey, I want to know what is beyond me, what is right, and, and, and be uh, humble according to that. So um, the reason I'm suspicious of our dreams is because I think that we're capable of um, being uh, ego-driven, uh, if not completely delusional about what we want. And uh, I think the honest humility within a, a collective force, within a group of people, uh, really challenges us against um, kind of uh, uh, indulging ourselves uh, too much. So that's why I'm a huge believer in uh, the value of, of community, because we're sharpening each other, we're shaping each other. Um, this is a little poem from John. You guys are familiar with this. It uh, ends with the For Whom the Bell Tolls. But he says, no man is an island entire of itself. Every man is a piece of continent, a part of the main. Um, so I think if we're viewing ourselves as a part of a, as a, part of a whole, um, humility is the thing that allows us to actually learn from each other. Uh, if, you, if you think that you know, you can't really learn anything if you already have it all figured out and you know everything. So. Um, likewise, there's this, uh, this uh, lyric from Fleet Foxes that I really love. Uh, he says, I was raised up believing I was somehow unique, like a snowflake distinct among snowflakes, unique in each way you can see. And now, after some thinking, I'd say I'd rather be a functioning cog in some great machinery serving something beyond me. So to learn anything uh, requires humility and uh, ego damns that growth. I guess like damn it to hell and damns it. You could use either one. It's just, it's the, it's the thing that stops us from moving forward. Um, and so, and then there's one more quote and I'll kind of, I want to wrap that into um, some of the values that we have at Weld is, is really believing in that uh, ability to, um, that, that we are better served when we're serving each other and that we're, we're um, more capable of pursuing those dreams like the earlier quotes talked about and realizing our full potential when we have that encouragement and those people alongside us that are, are both humbling us and we're learning from, but they're also empowering us to, to truly say like, hey, this is, pursuing your dreams is a good thing because this is a gift that you have and it's something that deserves, like the world needs that. Um, so creating together for the common good is not a, individual kind of, uh, I'm going to operate on my own reason. It's saying like, what have I been equipped with, empowered with, what voice do I have, and how can I use that to uh, change for the common good? So, um, Simone Weil is one of my favorites. Uh, she says, this is kind of an interesting spin. Am I on this one? Yeah. Uh, she says, humility is attentive patience. Um, which I really like. Um, it's just that idea of, of being able to have your eyes open to what's happening around you and not be so focused in on, I know what I want, but to say like, I can learn from you, I can learn from you. Like, I wanna know how you see the world and how you operate and what your dreams are and how I can be a part of that. Um, so all these things are ideals. Um, I'm a huge believer in uh, being in the right system, it's kind of like you have the freedom to form your, your habits, but then your habits kind of form you. Likewise, the architect said, first you make your home, then your home makes you. And so 
Um, if you're operating within a bad system, if you're operating within something that encourages you to be that solo kind of fighter like that will wear you down and it's hard to, um, it's hard to combat that. So creating healthy systems uh, is really something I value really important to me and, and something I think that we're trying to create here uh, with Weld is to create a system that kind of just beneath the surface naturally facilitates that, that desire to work with each other. You don't have to, but it's like, we're all right here, we can do so much more together. We're, we kind of have this idea of you know, two plus two equals five and the rising tide lifts all boats mentality is uh, instead of that scarcity mindset of it's me against the world, it's like, hey, we're, we can do so much more together. Um, so we just had, we just redid our website, uh, a guy named Jamie Wilson, super talented guy, who actually did the font too, which is called Norwester uh, that I'm using. We said, we believe the power of collective imagination can change the world. We are a frontier, a family, a community of innovators creating together for the common good. Community is essential for creative growth and sharing physical space is vital for providing the encouragement and resources to create our best work, to grow as individuals and to cultivate meaningful relationships. So in closing, um, the reason I wanted to frame, you know, humility, again, humility and pride, they're these kind of obtuse words. We generally know what we mean by them, but I think we have to frame it in the right context. And so I think we have to decide, are we, are we kind of self-referential beings or are we uh, a part of a, a bigger whole? And uh, I think it naturally, uh, if you believe that you're a part of something bigger and you want to transcend that, then I think that necessitates humility. Um, because you're a stagnant person, you're not able to be a part of that working whole uh, without humility. So, uh, on one hand, chase your dreams and, uh, and know that you're capable and feel empowered and, and know that um, the world needs the, the stuff that's inside your mind, you know, but uh, also frame that within uh, a selfless mindset that says, um, I'm, do, I'm, I'm doing this because I, I, it's not just serving myself. Um, and for me, that's what I'm trying to do. So and I think then getting in a healthy system that kind of promotes that is also great. So that's all I got. What is your daily struggle with humility? Like, like break that down. Because I think, feel like we all fight that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What does that look like for you? Not to get too personal, but what does that look like for you? Yeah, I'm gonna do the Robert Downey like, I'm not gonna talk about that. <laughs> Did you guys see that? Um, can you refresh, do you mean what, what do I have, how do I deflate my head or how do I overcome the idea that I'm not good enough? Yeah. But, <laughs> yeah. Um, I find, again, the, the, the I, I'm I've pretty trans or I have been pretty transient and I've noticed that um, my mindset really changes depending on what voices are around me. Um, I realize like I have uh, my perspective on life um, just because I, I, I'm going I'm here for a month or maybe I'm here for a month and or traveling around, I'm a little bit more in tune with the effect that the environment has on me. And so it makes me much more intentional about putting myself in a healthy environment where there are positive voices. Um, so that's why I'm like harping on that so much. For me, that makes a huge difference. Um, uh, I think uh, there's definitely like the times that I, I, I need a lot of time by myself to dream up all the you know, things that I want to do. Um, but for me, the biggest difference is uh, what voices are, are playing around me of the people that I'm surrounded with, if that's helpful. The, the, I guess the struggle, um, I think the struggle is the stuff that you're gifted with is maybe intuitive for you, and so you assume uh, everybody knows that, you know? Like, I, I've, that's not, I can't contribute anything because that's common knowledge. When in reality, those are things that are, uh, that, that are your giftings, that are intuitive to you. And uh, so you have to, 
and for me the, the, the struggle is saying like, ah, oh, people get that, like, I don't need to, I don't need to talk, I don't need to, um, you know, create this movie that I want to create, like, it's already been done before, you know, um, and so I think, um, just, yeah, kind of like the John quote, just saying like, hey, you've got a lot of good stuff, like, share it, you know, you have a unique voice, does that make sense? Um, I don't know, I, I, Nashville particularly, um, yeah, it's so easy. <laughs> it really is incredible. Um, I think, you know, people have systems that they're in there, um, and, but post-college life for most people is like, you're just like in a sea of, you're in the abyss, you don't know, you don't really have a system, you've got, You've got uh, your coworkers, or a bar, or a church, or something like that, but it's not, it doesn't feel as organic as, as the stuff that you've always grown up with. Uh, I was really shocked at how um, Nashville as a whole um, just really embraces people, and um, there's already kind of that collaborative mindset and that idea that, um, that we sharpen each other, and so I'm, I was pretty blown away when I moved out here. Um, that I had such like amazing friends, and um, so it's not a struggle for me here, which is pretty cool. Thanks to you guys. <laughs> Actually, this is exciting because I don't know a ton of you guys here, which is awesome. Uh, some of my friends are here, which I guess they didn't get tired of me talking before <laughs> decided to come out to an actual event. But uh, yeah, this is super exciting for me. A uh, system that's been helpful? Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, that's a good question. Um, I've, been, I've been really uh, intentional about consuming more, oddly. Uh, I, always, I always think like watching a TV show or like listening to podcasts or reading a book is like, I don't make room for that because I'm like, oh, you need to, you've got all these ideas you want to do, like don't waste your time reading a book. But I've, and cause I, I majored in like literature and that was like my thing, but it's just been so long because I'm like, now you're in the producing phase. So for me, uh, it's really necessary to, um, to, to what's, what's being on the input side uh, as a creative because um, you want to be inspired and influenced. And so um, just making a habit of, um, of not feeling guilty about consuming, you know, that's, uh, that's nice. And then, uh, finding out that these kind of auxiliary things on the outside, like working out or eating healthy, just kind of this holistic uh, things that you don't really attach to the creative journey, but really those things infiltrate and permeate into that. And uh, so I think it's really important to be thinking about more than just um, your art or whatever project you're working on. Yes. Yeah, that's a good question. Um, I was actually, when I started traveling a lot, um, I was a little concerned that uh, I think, uh, so I read the Kierkegaard, is this philosopher, and he always talks about um, that virtue is built up in long suffering. And so like you can't possibly be a virtuous person if you're, uh, if you don't have to like sacrifice, if you don't have to be long suffering. So in my head, I'm like, well, if I'm hopping around every three weeks, no one's counting on me for anything. Like I'm telling their story and that's cool, but like, is that, does that make me a selfish person? Does that make me just an observer? Um, does that like make me less of a virtuous person? So. Um, that was always a fear, but I think what I didn't expect was um, a kind of empathy that developed by seeing tons of different cultures and telling stories and just being able to sit back and, and say, like, um, kind of in a peaceful way, um, whatever somebody's going through, there's something behind that. And that, I think, was developed more because of uh, 
seeing a diversity of <laughs> stories, bringing the house down. Um, yeah, that's the, the, yeah, so I'm still doing a little bit of that. Uh, did I, what was the original question? <laughs> Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. That's I think I like that quote a lot about the attentive patience. Uh, when, especially when you're in you know developing countries, you have what you think should happen, and uh, the humility comes into play of just saying like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be an observer. I'm gonna be a learner of this culture. Um, instead of assuming that it should be a certain way. Um, so, yeah. Do you feel like you have to hold yourself back sometimes because you're so little active? I thought you said bro active. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I didn't even learn to surf. Uh, do I feel like I. What's that? Try. Yeah, I try. <laughs> yeah. Uh, say that one more time. It, it, do I combat in the proactive? You said, you said to her question that you know, in certain situations you can go and visit these people, knowing that you're not in control of the bigger picture. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 That's a good. That's a good uh, question. I think the. I think the most important thing is. Um, paying attention to the people that are, you're directly interacting with in the present. And so, obviously there's a lot of stuff going on in the background. You know, like building well is this huge project, but then um, I don't want to be so lost in that that I'm not uh, paying attention to the person talking to me. And so I think, um, yeah, I, I think just having your priorities in line about what is the most important thing to do. And that's, um, and that's what you're experiencing in the, you know, some of those different cultures is just like, hey, we're gonna, sit here for three hours and not do anything, you know, it's like, that's okay, <laughs> because we're doing the most important thing, which is uh, developing that relationship. Um, so th I, I think that's what I'm trying to be most proactive in. Um, and I think in turn that uh, facilitates the most momentum towards big things happening. You know, it's kind of a paradox, but um, that you're actually better off uh, in the long run of, uh, uh, of prioritizing that. Yes, ma'am. How would you say you dealt with failure um, and the engagement in the The banana battle. suit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, it's even more you know, culminating, culminating in that right? Mm, no. Yeah. Um, yeah. Specifically, the filmmaking is tough for me because a failure is a film's a super like a group project, uh, and if I'm like writing and directing, I'm like I don't want to bring 20 people into this and it not be like worth their time, you know. So that's that's one of the um, kind of roadblocks that I have to get over mentally. Um, but um, yeah. I think the, the failures that have happened is, you know, that failure is when you have the idea in your head and then you finish the product and you're like, that's nothing like what I thought it was going to be in my head. Um, so I haven't, in, in the film world, I'm trying to think, I haven't had like the massive just total failure flop. I'm, I'm trying to create a feature film uh, post Well Nashville and uh, that may be a spectacular flop. So that'll be really fun to experience. But I've got, I got to the point, I think because of the, 
the smaller uh, kind of battles of saying, um, it's important that I do this. And like at this point, I'm like, I want to make a film, and it can be a really crappy film, and that's fine. But I want to, I want to do that, you know, instead of um, having this grand idea that never, you know, gets gets done at all. It's like, uh, you know, if you're doing pottery, do, doing 30 in a row is better than spending 30 times as long on one thing. And so I think um, uh, learning a lot from just the small failures uh, kind of um, creates a shift in your mind of like, I can apply this to something bigger now. So I would, I would say just fail a lot, you know, is the thing to do, you know. I think that's it. Thank you.